Cutting the material brings large pieces of acetate closer to becoming glasses. However, that is far from enough. The follow-up work involves understanding the internal structure of the acetate. Due to it being made of plant cellulose and the addition of various chemical reagents during the manufacturing process, it absorbs and releases moisture from the surrounding environment during the production and storage of the acetate. In a high humidity environment, the acetate absorbs moisture from the air, causing an increase in the spacing between molecules and leading to the expansion of the sheet material's dimensions. Conversely, when the sheet material is exposed to low humidity, it releases moisture, resulting in size reduction. Therefore, it is necessary to ensure that the acetate is in its most stable state before production. How can this be achieved? Firstly, we usually start by cutting the frame material to create the lens openings. We keep the lens cutouts aside, as they will be used for another purpose later. Then, the material is sent into an oven for baking. Under the combined effects of heat and airflow, the acetate undergoes significant dehydration. This process typically lasts for a period of five to six days. Next, we add some physical details to the acetate sheet. As widely known for most eyeglass frames, the bridge area has the highest curvature on the frame front. This curvature is beyond the capability of CNC machining. The heat plays a crucial role once again. After heating, the bridge curvature is pressed into shape through stamping. Simultaneously, we mill the positioning holes to prepare for the follow-on work. We mentioned that the thickness of the frame material is 6.0 millimeters. Upon careful observation, it is not difficult to notice that certain areas of the entire frame are thicker. such as the nose pad. Here, we solve this issue by lamination. In the industry, the commonly used nose pad acetate is transparent. By applying high frequency vibrations, the two pieces of material merge together. The two pieces of material are joined together to create raised sections we will do it in the same way if the lug lamination is needed. Here, leave you with a question to ponder. What we use to laminate the lug? And what is the purpose of the lens cutouts we saved earlier? Expanding a bit further here, with the support of craftsmanship and the boundless imagination of humans, the lamination is often utilized to add vibrant colors to the eyeglass frames. We will introduce this aspect to all of you in the subsequent chapters. For the follow-on work, we left it to the CNC machine. Different cutting tools give the eyeglass frames distinct vitality. Firstly, we start by milling the internal shapes of the eyeglass frames, such as lens shapes, lens grooves, and nose pad shape. Next, we proceed to mill the external shape of the eyeglass frames, including the frame's overall contour.
a single sheet of acetate, undergoing high temperatures, ray fusion and multiple refinements through engraving. At this point, the initial form of the eyeglass frame front is shown. For it to become a qualified pair of glasses, it still needs to grow further. If you're an eyewear brand owner who need product support, or maybe you want to build your eyewear brand, no more hesitating to contact us. Our production team will try our best to help you. Next episode, we will introduce the production process of Temple. Please stay tuned for more updates.